worked in the UK now for a while. Um, Kenya has a very advanced medical service in lots of different areas, but in particular in congenital heart, uh, and even uh, acquired, it's quite far behind. So um, over my number of visits that I used to come down to Kenya, sort of realized that there is very few procedures being done in Kenya. Very, the patients who are uh, around Kenya are struggling to get enough care. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a number of cardiologists in Kenya, a number of surgeons in Kenya, but the setup in Kenya is not uh, as robust as it should be. Doing anything to the heart is, is very delicate. Um, I think that the results of open heart surgery have become so good in uh, Western countries that probably people forget how, how complex it is. So um, it'd be nice that if you guys get an opportunity to go and see the operating theater to see how many teams are involved. There's quite a huge number of teams all working for just the same uh, goal of trying to operate on a child. But what the delicacy is that <clears throat> there are lots of different factors to consider when you're opening up a child's chest. Uh, you're, uh, so starting even before that, you need to make sure that the child is safe to be put to sleep, and that's done by the anesthetic team. Then the child needs to have um, the chest open, and that's done by the surgeons. <clears throat> the heart is then stopped because if you have a moving heart, you can't operate on it. Um, and the heart is stopped, and then you have the perfusionist who then takes over the circulation, so that's another team. The surgeon then operates on the heart, so you need the surgical team and the scrub nurse team who sort of looks after that. Um, once the operation completes, uh, and then the surgeon has finished with that, then the perfusionist then uh, gives the circulation back to the patient to see what the, the heart condition is like. Then the cardiologist comes in to check what the uh, result of the surgery is. If it's fine, that's the end of the surgery. The patient gets closed up. The perfusionist work is finished now. The, anaesth the anesthetist now is throughout in the background doing everything. Then the patient then goes to the intensive care team. Then you have the intensive care team which looks after the patient. And throughout the time you have cardiologists coming in and out all the time making sure that everything's and coordinating the entire process. So there's a huge number of uh, different people who are involved in making sure that the heart uh, operation is successful. Mm. What about <coughs> catheterization? Is it a similar team? It's a similar team, <coughs> but uh, less uh, invasive because if you were to do an atrial septal defect, you'd have the same kind of uh, process that we're talking about. So it's expensive. Uh, it uh, requires a huge amount of expertise. But with the cardiac catheterization, uh, it's less invasive. Uh, but the equipment that we use is very expensive. Uh, the team involved is smaller, so you, you, don't have, um, you don't have the perfusionist team, for example, and you don't often have the intensive care team uh, involved as well. But you still have the cardiologists. Uh, you don't have the surgeons, but the cardiologists are doing the procedures. Uh, you have the, anesthet the anesthetic team, you have the scrub team, you have the nurses. So there's still uh, another team involved, but the, other, the flip side is that the equipment that we use are, is really expensive. It's expensive because, so in Kenya particularly, so <clears throat> if you're doing procedures which are ad hoc and you're doing uh, 40 to 50 procedures a year, everything is more expensive. The cost of buying the equipment, maintaining the equipment, um, having relationships with different companies, uh, customs from Kenya, from the tax authorities, everything starts adding up and becomes really expensive. If you go to a place like India, for example, where they do a huge number of surgery, they have significantly redu reduced costs because they do so, so many. Uh, they have better uh, relationships with industry because the amount of equipment being ordered is much more. The surgical team, the cardiologists are much more experienced in doing the procedures, so the complication rates are lower, and hence the outcomes are better, so the overall cost of everything is much cheaper. Uh, the investment from the government to help out with the medical team in terms of making sure that they are not only involved in the negotiation with the companies, but they're also 
ensuring that taxation on these products are much less. So it's a whole, it's a number of different factors. Can I get the, um... When I started off my first mission, uh, which it was um, in, in collection with the Kenyan team, I, I find that the, 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 the major uh, um, limitation is the cost of equipment. Um, and after so many years of charity teams visiting Kenya, there is still a reliance on having products for free. Um, no company in the world can provide products for free. They can do it for a charity for a short period of time and then that has to change into some sort of a, uh, a sustainable business. Um, similarly, if you're doing very few procedures, then the companies are always going to be directing their work towards where there is a higher amount of business coming to them. And if we don't develop a program in Kenya where the companies know that in this place there's continual procedures happening, we should invest over here. Um, the government sort of says, well, we think that congenital heart disease is an important situation, then, and they're investing in what happens in the future, things will never improve. Just to give you an example, uh, in England, uh, in the UK, we do five, just over 5,000 open heart surgeries a year in the whole of the UK with a population of about 60, 65 million. The, in Kenya, where the population is about 50 million, uh, where the estimation from WHO is that there is similar number of patients which require heart surgery because of the birth rate, we only do, Kenya as a whole does probably about 100, 120 open heart surgeries a year, of which uh, the vast majority are done by, or I would say at least half of them are done by, by charity missions. Yeah. In Kenya, uh, from a nutritional point of view, if, you, if, you're, if the child has been found to have a heart condition, again, it depends on what you have. But the most important part is uh, making sure that they're eating and drinking well because they need to be having a good amount of nutrition, a good amount of calories to cope with a heart condition. They need to have uh, a regular checkup with a cardiologist. And the third thing that I can think of uh, is making sure that their dentition, their teeth are really well looked after. It's something which we don't talk about and something which is not um, understood very well even uh, in Western countries, um, particularly with families, is the importance of having good dentition. And the reason for that is that when you have a heart condition of any kind, which is congenital, you are at a higher risk of having an infection of the heart. And that can be devastating. Uh, that can have severe repercussions. So um, if you have a, a child, or even if you don't have a child with heart condition, the importance of having very good dental hygiene, uh, ensuring that you don't have lots of sweet things, uh, making sure that you brush your teeth really well, and if you have a heart condition that you're aware of, making sure that you get yourself checked with a dentist uh, is really, really important. Um, and so that, those are the kind of advice that we give. In terms of um, having a heart condition and um, visiting doctors, this is the fundamental issue why our charity comes down. The awareness is, is low in Kenya. Um, I can tell you that when I came here uh, three and a half years ago and had our first camp, uh, a lot of my family members and friends were not aware about congenital heart disease because they never had a child that they'd seen who had that condition. So explaining to um, friends and family about what it's about makes you realize that actually the awareness across Kenya is, is quite low. Uh, the second thing is that it's fine for families who can afford medical care, but uh, it's one of the most expensive uh, specialties uh, that is available because the intensity of, of care, the amount of um, information that is required is not cheap. So that is, a, that is a, a big stumbling block for the vast majority of patients because they see, a, they see a doctor, they realize they have a heart condition and then they're stuck. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to seek help. They don't know who to go to. They don't know how to raise money. Um, and then we come down in a camp and they feel that maybe we'll be able to get something over here. So we have a, a huge number of people coming around and asking for help. 
So our team has grown. Our relationship with locals is growing. Um, I'm a Kenyan. The team that I choose, I try to make sure that they have an investment um, uh, in making sure that they want to come back. They have a, either a relationship to Kenya or a neighboring country of Kenya because that allows uh, an investment in terms of wanting to come back. Um, and I'm really, really passionate about setting up a service here. Uh, I'm re I really think there is a huge potential. We see uh, so many uh, patients who uh, come here all the time uh, who require procedures done and you know there is it, it's a completely no-brainer it has to be done if you look at uh, our neighboring countries for example Tanzania uh, Tanzania has uh, a specific heart center which has been established alongside a big uh, hospital and they have invested a program they've had people coming from overseas which have worked with side by side now they've gone away and now the local Tanzanians are doing procedures they are able to do the vast majority of the simple ones and they invite charity missions like us mm -hmm. so our mission is going down in July to do a bit more complex procedures now so there is there is a process there is uh, a possibility of things happening there is no reason why it can't congenital heart diseases still remain a leading cause of birth defects that require a little more attention, especially because a significant number of children in Kenya remain unattended to due to the inadequate diagnostic capability and management and often high cost of surgeries. A lot more needs to be done to save these little hearts. This has been Health Digest. I'm Dr. Masi Korir. from Buchura village in Kitutu Church's south constituency but Judy Kwambuka Umwancha lives and sells vegetables in Kisi town. Most of our customers and neighbors who know nothing about her condition often believe Judy Kwambuka is ever pregnant. They wonder why her pregnancy has exceeded the normal gestation period. <laughs> Eight years ago, Kwamboka's labor failed to progress. She was first taken to a local health center and then rushed to the Kisi Level 5 hospital. She was taken for an emergency cesarean section after the doctors learned that her third pregnancy was a breech presentation. She gave birth to a baby boy, but after a month, Kwamboka's stomach started. Swelling. It was particularly painful on the scar following the Sicilian section. She was taken for a scan which revealed that she had an incisional hernia. According to Dr. Geoffrey Otomu, the condition may have developed if she lifted heavy weights immediately after the C-section. A lot of them you will find that uh, immediately after surgery, either because they lack uh, a strong social support system, they started working on their own very early, like calling uh, luggage or water to uh, kitchen to cook, uh, washing clothes, uh, carrying them to airing them out, uh, carrying foodstuffs. So that tends to exert some pressure on the uh, not very well healed uh, wound. Mimi mama unajua mimi sina mtu wa kunifanyia. Mimi hujifanyia kazi na niko na watoto na lazima watoto wangu wafanye nini? Wabaye waende shule. Siwezi nikafanya nini? Siwezi nikakaa hivi mama hezi kaa hivyo bila kufanya kazi yoyote nyumbani. Kwamboka underwent two incision hernia repairs that did not bear any fruit. Nikifanya kazi sana huwa sasa zingine ninasikia uchungu. Kama kukiwa na baridi huwa nasikia uchungu. After the first harrowing experience more salt was rubbed into her wound when she got pregnant 6 months after her first unsuccessful incision hernia repair the vegetable vendor is living in pain and agony. Siwezi fanga joto alafu siwezi 
va nguo ambaye ni si, si nini skati na blouse mi uvaa dress peke yake eh, sababu nikivaa kuna kauzi waliniachia hapa uzi yenye ninanisumbanga sana sasa hiyo uzi ni kama ilileta uzaa sasa ni kaanza kusikia inanuka according to dr otom constipation may cause hernia and one that once operated patients should contact their doctors if they strain while moving their bowels in the midline where usually these incisions are done uh, we call it a watershed area you know there is uh, minimal uh, blood circulation there so the healing uh, tends to be poor and especially if people uh, who have undergone surgery begin to exert a lot of uh, uh, pressure abdominal pressure other causes of hernia include chronic coughing vomiting and sneezing after surgery these are complications that can occur uh, for any surgery but uh, once uh, it's, it's known there is thorough mm. review if there is anything that is predisposing and then uh, those predispositions are manipulated to make sure that the surgery uh, outcome is good and as expected. A doctor told her to go in for another surgical repair but facing the knife again is daily sending shivers down her spine. Niliporudi kwa daktari nikaenda nikafikiria okay ninarudi kwa kwa daktari. Najua uwezi fanywa operation saidi ya mara ine. Mm. Saidi ya mara ine daktari aliniambia uwezi fanywa saidi ya mara ine. Kifanywa mara ine hiyo ni ku risk. <laughs> eh? Yeah. Nikaogopa nikafikiri je watu wangu ni wadogo. Siwezi ili ni siwezi acha watoto wangu wakiwa wadogo. Unajua mama mama ana, anaweza kuliko baba. For this patient who is fearing what I can advise her is that let her I go to the primary physician they sit down discuss uh, through the the whole process let her express her fears and concerns and then the doctor will be able to explain but if she finds that is difficult and she cannot do that then i would advise that she seeks for a second opinion undertaking her daily chores is a nightmare due to intractable and unbearable pain there is now increased advocacy for minimal uh, minimum minimum minim minim surgery uh, that means mm. small openings to access the inside of the body and that tends to you know uh, minimize such complications kombaka resumed her vegetable vending business 4 months ago after a break of over 6 years due to chronic pain and depression wana daktari lazima ukue na nini 1300 hiyo 1300 ni stock ya mboga mimi uuza mboga sasa sijui Iyo ni hata siwezi pata hiyo 1300 ya kuona daktari. Dr. Otomo has urged mothers and patients who have undergone abdominal operations to avoid lifting of luggage and heavy work until after 6 months when the wound is healed completely. Fred Muturip KTN News Patients Diary, Kisi County.